Dobadan. Good morning. Uh, welcome to this event. My name is Abdul Hamid Zuhairi. I'm the president of the Euro Mediterranean University. And I would like to uh, start by uh, thanking our uh, distinguished uh, panelists and also thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Slovenia for uh, organizing this event uh, with us. And uh, particularly, I would like to thank Mr. Uh, Ishtok Mirosic, the Secretary of State of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Slovenia. And I'd also like to thank Ambassador Veronika Stabe and Petra Kejman for a long-standing cooperation with IMUNI and uh, co-organizing this very important uh, event on Slovenia, a Mediterranean country. And there is a question mark there. Maybe I didn't pose it as a question because I have no doubt in my mind about what I think about Slovenia, but maybe I will tell you this, but um, in the, on your agenda you'll find, is, it Slovenia, is Slovenia a Mediterranean country? I'd like to first welcome uh, our distinguished uh, panelists. We have uh, Mr. Fathallah Sejil Masi, the Secretary General of the Union for the Mediterranean, which we are having in Slovenia for the third time or second time this year, I guess. Year, yeah. We don't come. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, Ms. Tania Fayon, she's a member of the European Parliament. Thank you very much for coming. We have uh, Ms. Lola Banyan Castellon, she's the director of the Mediterranean C Citizens Assembly Foundation. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, Professor Fabio Finotti from the University of Trieste, also in Istria, on the, on the Mediterranean. And we have Mr. Ali, Said Ali, he's the co-founder of the Frame Life uh, and the Euro-Mediterranean Photo Marathon. And uh, this event will be moderated by Ms. Nini Podrizhin, uh, Pod, Podkriznik. Did, did I pronounce it right? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> She's from the Delu newspaper. She's the biggest newspaper in Slovenia for those who don't know. So... Uh, and this round table, I think, is going to be followed by inauguration of a photo exhibition, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which I hope will also prove my point that <coughs> Slovenia is definitely a Mediterranean country. It just depends how we look at it and from which angle. Uh, being a Mediterranean country doesn't mean that this is the only heritage of Slovenia. Slovenia was uh, one of the former Yugoslav Republic, one of the states of former Yugoslav Republic, is looked at as also a, a Central European state, an EU member state, a, a Balkan, West Balkan state. So I think that this diversity of cultural heritage and background and uh, identities provides richness uh, for Slovenia and not particularly we have to attach one identity and say this is Slovenia because on the contrary, this diversity in, in identities gives Slovenia a very particular uh, position at the heart of Europe, at the crossroads between East and West, between uh, Central and Southern Europe, between uh, Eastern uh, uh, cultures and Western cultures. And I think this adds to the uh, uh, specificity of Slovenia. And if you still have any doubt in your mind about Slovenia being here in Ljubljana, you can have a look at this picture, which we are uh, uh, giving to our uh, panelists today. And this shows the Euro-Mediterranean University on the Porto Piccolo de Peran, because Slovenia is also uh, has an Italian minority, particularly in Istria. And uh, there the university lies on the small port of Piran on the uh, Adriatic, which is again the Mediterranean. So, uh, I would like to just mention a few words about uh, the Euro-Mediterranean University. Take this uh, important event that was established in 2008 by an uh, uh, initiative from the Slovenian government. At that time, uh, Slovenia had the uh, uh, presidency of the EU Council, which will come again in 2021, not far away. And uh, it was established as uh, a platform for cooperation and student and staff exchange across the Mediterranean. Uh, it was established as a network of uh, cooperating universities in the EU and the South Mediterranean countries. And uh, it was established in the beautiful municipality of Piran, 
which the mayor of Piran is just uh, walking in, Mr. Peter Bosman. And uh, for the last 10 years, uh, Imoni or the Euro Mediterranean University has strived to uh, live up to the expectations from it. There were, of course, some turbulent times, and I would like to say that uh, I'm sure that many academics would agree with me that 10 years in the uh, age of a university is nothing. This is still an infant university. The good thing about Imuni is that it doesn't have to work alone because of its strong network of cooperating <coughs> universities currently around 130 on both shores of the Mediterranean. It receives a lot of support from its network and uh, we uh, work a lot with the network. One of the activities that we are currently uh, uh, conducting, and I'm mentioning this because Ali is here, is the uh, photo competition. We are also running a photo competition at Imuni. It's open until the 17th of September, <coughs> and the title of only, under the title of Only in the Mediterranean. So we are asking uh, the competitors to choose some pictures that depict the rich culture of the Mediterranean and its people, and post it uh, on our uh, website, post us the pictures. We are going to choose <coughs> the best 30 and we'll have an exhibition next year when we are celebrating our 10th anniversary next June. The best 12 pictures will also be uh, uh, printed uh, in the Imuni annual calendar of 2018. So uh, I would like you all to, to spread the word about this uh, exhibition about this competition, which is only in the Mediterranean. We want to have the specificity of the cultures and the people in the Mediterranean depicted in these uh, photos. As I said, next year we are celebrating our 10th anniversary. And uh, during this year we will have a lot of uh, activities. I think it is going to be uh, quite an, uh, a vibrant and active dynamic year for Imuni. Uh, we have, as always, our annual conference and we will have a big event in uh, Piran from the 8th to the 10th of June, uh, centered around the 9th of June, on which date we were established uh, 10 years ago. And uh, you will find more information in the coming months on our website, and we'd like you to uh, engage in these activities. Finally, I'd like to say also that we welcome very much cooperation with the Annalyn Foundation and its uh, Slovenian branch. We are organizing a conference with the Annalyn Foundation uh, in October next month, uh, together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Education of Slovenia. And this conference would be on uh, intercultural uh, citizenship education. I think it's a very important topic, and we're very happy to engage in activities with the Annalyn. Uh, yet last year we organized with them a translation conference together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Again. I would like to thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for their active uh, support to uh, Imuni. I would like to thank all the institutions who are here today, our distinguished panelists, and wish you all uh, a fruitful uh, panel discussion and roundtable. Thank you very much. was forgetting very important assignments. <laughs> now I'd like uh, to present to you the Secretary of State of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Slovenia, Mr. Istuk Mirosic, who is going to also give the welcome uh, speech. And then we will start the uh, roundtable discussion. Mr. Mirosic, please. Thank you for your kind announcement. Otherwise, I would grab myself this, uh, this place uh, here. And I hope that, uh, uh, um, that this uh, discussion will go uh, really well. Uh, I do come from the Mediterranean part of Slovenia, I would say, so it's my preferred topic uh, uh, all the way. So, dear Secretary General of the Union for Mediterranean, uh, Fatala Shijilmasi, um, President of EMUNI, Dr. Uh, Abdelhamid Zoheri, uh, members of the Annalyn Foundation panelists, distinguished guests, and our dearest uh, Euro-Mediterranean friends. Um, at first sight, today's question, are we a Mediterranean country, seems a rhetorical one. Is Slovenia aware of its Mediterranean identity? 
The declaration and the strategy of foreign policy of Slovenia states that Slovenia is a Central European and Mediterranean country, <coughs> besides the Alpine as well. Slovenian port of copper is a leading northern Adriatic port and a gateway for Central Europe to the world. It is a driving force for the Slovenian economic development and growth in the Adriatic and Mediterranean as well, and the main logistics center for the Central and Eastern Europe. Clearly, we boast indisputable geographical, historical and cultural ties with this region, which we can call it a cradle of the world civilization. We are a proud member of the Union for the Mediterranean. We are active in the Adriatic Union Initiative, and our coast, for instance, has witnessed the adoption of the first sustainable development strategy for the Mediterranean. Almost 10 years ago, we also welcomed the Euro-Mediterranean University, EMUNI, in Piran, whose role in building bridges in the region today is even bigger. However, the Mediterranean boundaries are not only geographical, neither they are only historical or cultural. Often, more and more often, unfortunately, the boundaries are defined in our minds. Where does the Euro-Mediterranean region start? Where does it end? The question is not a Slovenian one, only a Slovenian one. It is a topical for the whole region. Conflicts, intolerance and violence that have marked it throughout the history increase the temptation to shy away from the regional cooperation. For better or worse, the last wave of migration served as a wake-up call that clearly pointed to the closeness and interconnectedness of the south and north of the Mediterranean shores. We cannot deny the fact that lately the attention has majority, major, majorly lingered on the negative elements. <clears throat> we are dealing with the issue of refugees, migration, security, terrorism, political instability and economic challenges. We, not just Slovenia, but the EU as a whole, definitely need to face these challenges the root causes of these issues and make positive changes, bringing stability and economic growth to the Mediterranean area, offer opportunities to young people to use their potential and ensure education that prevents radicalism and intolerance. And in this process, we all have a role to play. The unstable Mediterranean of today is changing and reshaping the political landscape of the EU as well. The growing populism, intolerance in Europe, and the maintenance of police control on the internal EU Schengen borders are all a clear demonstration that the European Union should deal with the Mediterranean much more seriously and proactively. Mediterranean has become a serious security question. On the other hand, thousands of people who crossed the sea and lost their lives should remind us also of our human and humanitarian consciousness. The focus should not be only on strengthening the security on the outer EU borders, but also on tackling the root causes of the misery of refugees and migrants. Slovenia is doing its share. We were the first and the only country to collaborate in the Italian rescue and petrol mission Mare Nostrum years ago. With this act of solidarity, we also wanted to send a strong warning signal to Europe of how serious <coughs> is the migration, migration problem on the southern EU border. Such issues cannot be considered only as an Italian problem and responsibility. It's EU problem as well. Slovenia also actively participates in the EU's burden-sharing efforts by hosting many of refugees coming to the European Union via Mediterranean. The destiny of the Mediterranean is closely connected with the European Union and vice versa. It is absolutely clear to me <coughs> that we, Slovenia and the European Union should devote much more attention and energy to the Mediterranean. Ladies and gentlemen, the goals of today's events from the Forum of Intercultural Cities, this roundtable and the following photo exhibition is to boost the spirit of neighbourhood and connectivity. We wish to expose the unique potential of regional cooperation, exchange and mutual support. The exhibition One Day in Mediterranean, which will be inaugurated today on the Congress Square, is the result of these collective actions in the region. It recalls the power of synergies and cultural diversity. We are honored to welcome the founder of the project, Ali Sayed Ali, here today. And uh, we would like, and I would like personally, to thank our partners 
EMUNI, the Slovenian network of, of uh, the Annaline Foundation, APIS Institute, A broader way. I wish you a fruitful discussion, which I hope to bring new ideas and perspectives about achieving security and prosperity in Mediterranean. And uh, of course, uh, I'm sure we won't uh, uh, we won't uh, uh, conclude this topic today. It's ongoing process, and like we talked with the Secretary General before, probably we should not we should uh, we, we need not just a, a focused approach but uh, more long-term uh, solutions and not quick fixes like the European Union uh, did in the past years. Thank you very much and I wish you really a good work here. So we have gathered today uh, here at the City Museum of Ljubljana to answer the question, is Slovenia a Mediterranean country? And to show that uh, actually everything is overlapped and connected from policy or different uh, policies to journalism and literature, uh, from economy to civil society and non-governmental uh, organizations. So I would kindly ask uh, all the panelists uh, to try to be quite uh, short, uh, at the beginning at least. Mm -hmm. I think that around two or three minutes uh, uh, will be enough for the first question. So um, let us begin. The Mediterranean is rich and beautiful and it has always been a place of knowledge and exchange, one of uh, transmission and enrichment of many dreams and at the same time full of uh, fears and tears. Is it still uh, the case? It's Mr. Fatalah Sijilmasi, Director, uh, Secretary General of the Union for the Mediterranean. Mediterranean. What would be your definition of Mare Nostrum? Well, thank you very much and uh, very happy to be here and participate uh, to this event and uh, thank you, State Secretary, for your very inspiring words. Well, <coughs> maybe the best way to start the debate is by saying that uh, we may have been uh, uh, over-enthusiastic about the uh, romantic vision about the Mare Nostrum. Yes, we should keep some romance in our hearts and in our minds. But at the same time, when you look at a region such as the Mediterranean, with its challenges and opportunities, one has to, and the State Secretary said it very well, one has to structure a long-term vision. So we have to be able to recognize that the romantic vision of our common heritage, and it's full of excellent books uh, on that, but will not be enough to structure a working, methodological, pragmatic, long-term vision slash action to reach this overarching objective of peace, security, and challenges. So my call would be today, and then I would elaborate yeah. on my uh, other answer, is to say heart and mind. Let's not forget the hearts, but let's work on our minds and actions and to structure a political, strategic, methodological perspective for our Euro-Mediterranean relation. And this is what the Union for the Mediterranean aims to do with its member states and a certain number of uh, stakeholders. Okay, thanks. Mrs. Uh, Tanya Fayoni, member of uh, the European Parliament. Uh, what is the identity of the Mediterranean uh, area like? I mean, um, this area, there are about 20, or exactly, 20, exactly 23 countries, uh, 
that uh, surround the Mediterranean uh, Sea uh, as uh, Slovenians. Are we, uh, uh, does our identity overlap with the <coughs> identity of Mediterranean peoples actually? Are we uh, the Mediterraneans, if I may uh, use this term? Thank you for inviting me to this panel. I think it's a great opportunity. We are discussing common challenges we face today in Europe, in Mediterranean. Asking me about the identity, um, as we heard at the beginning, we cannot put one particular identity. But I see often a challenge when I speak with Slovenians, for example, especially with the young people, that they don't feel European identity. So to say what they don't feel about Mediterranean identity. For me, Slovenia certainly is a Mediterranean country. It's also a European country, it's a Balkan country. I feel many identities, but it very much goes down to the, I would say, to the um, um, individual. We have a lot of potential in our country, and what you said, Professor, before, that we need a long-term vision or a strategic approach, this is something where I fear we are very weak. We have big difficulties, not only in Slovenia, when we discuss about a long-term vision or strategic approach, what we as a country want, do we want to be focused on the Balkan, how strong we are partnering the European Union, how we tackle the Mediterranean challenges. The same goes to European Union. I think for the last few, and I have to speak as a European parliamentarian, also a bit more about the European Union and approach towards the Mediterranean. I think for the last few years, when we are going through several crises, we lost a strategic vision for the European Union because we are just tackling the crisis when another one appears. So it more feels that we are like um, trying to stop the fire but never having this strategic approach when we had it six years ago that we want to work together, have strong economic, strong political ties, um, and we are lacking today a lot of solidarity. And we are having, I think, Mediterranean and Europe, um, um, our destinies are very strongly tied together. And we have today challenges that we really have to face together. There was mentioned irregular migration, um, security questions, fight against terrorism. So I think each of our countries in Europe can benefit a lot with the cooperation with Mediterranean. And here I think as Slovenians I wish to see we would have better strategic approach also when tackling with the Mediterranean countries. In our, we are finally the last country in the border of the European Union um, bordering to Mediterranean. So as such, I think we have a, a lot of responsibilities and we can be a very good mediator. Of course. Uh, Mrs. Lola Banyon Castellon, uh, you are director of Mediterranean Citizen Assembly Foundation. Okay, I do agree we should combine uh, our hearts and mind, it's true. But is Mediterranean still poetic and beautiful? Because these days um, we are talking a lot about uh, migration, migrant uh, crisis, about uh, the Mediterranean as a cemetery. Uh, we are talking about the youth unemployability, for example. But um, what would be your perception of the Mediterranean beauty, the beauty of communication, of uh, dialogues, of uh, uh, meetings, uh, of dreams also, especially people from the southern side uh, are dreaming a lot uh, uh, about Europe and uh, the northern part. Okay? First of all, thank you for inviting me. Thanks to uh, Secretary of State. Thanks to the Director of Muni. Thanks also to the Secretary General to the Union of the Mediterranean. Thanks to the panelists and everybody. I think, uh, as a director of an uh, entity uh, for citizens, that we need a romantic vision. Because we need this strength. I think uh, for implement a political decision, a political strategy, we need also uh, an idea. This is very, very important. The Mediterranean uh, don't exist. Uh, exist a collective uh, personality, and uh, we are very proud. Uh, for example, in Spain, we are very proud of having this this opportunity to have this uh, foundation, FACM. Uh, we have partners for 28 countries, 
almost of the Mediterranean and uh, we are very proud to have a seminar in November in Morocco because at this <coughs> specific moment we need to make an extra effort for uh, construct an identity, uh, collective identity. Why? Because we have uh, very hard problems in common. First of all, economical. Uh, after the crisis, Mediterranean uh, countries has been punished more than more than the north. This is uh, very clear. Uh, this is very clear. Uh, the in general, the political of the European Union is always looking uh, on the first time on the north, and it's very easy for us. For example, in Spain, it's very easy. Spain, that is a country. Uh, Pura in the history, with a very uh, extended heritage of the Arabs, it's very clear in the design of the European political. We have forget systematically uh, our neighbors, then our neighbors on the south, neighbors that we have more <coughs> even more strong relationship than the neighbors on the north. Then our foundation uh, was in. 2008, the same year of the Emuni, then it means there is something feeling uh, in the air. We need to do something. We need to do something. We have also at this specific moment the problem of the young people, the problem, but at the same time a big opportunity in the Mediterranean. We have a very, very, very important human uh, capital, capital humano, we say in Espanol. And I think uh, this is the, the more strong weapon we have in order to build a new political <coughs> strategy. It's very important also to make uh, a good uh, diagnosis of the situation, not only economical and political problem. We have, we have also a uh, security problem, very, very delicate to deal with in the media, for example. Me, uh, uh, I'm the director of the foundation, but also I'm uh, my uh, profession is I'm a journalist. And uh, I'm suffering these days of seeing how the problem of the security is uh, uh, on the media. Uh, it's a danger for our uh, collective identity. And then we need to, to, to make a, a strategical uh, uh, bit for that. We are together in all these problems. And I think this is the best position uh, for trying to, to solve this from our perspective. Professor Fabio Finotti, uh, Universidad de Trieste. No? A short question for you. There is no, um, there is no uh, beauty without the beast, vice versa. No. So, uh, what can do literature? Because you are a professor of uh, Italian literature. The Mediterranean area is full of myths, Greek myths. Huh? Uh, what would you say? Sorry. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs> Literature and language. Yeah. Yesterday for me was the first time I came uh, uh, to Ljubljana and I stopped uh, in uh, a restaurant and only when I was seated I realized that the name of the restaurant was Mediterraneo. And uh, in the menu uh, there was polenta, frogs, goulash. Uh, so uh, many things uh, that uh, usually we don't eat uh, in uh, the Mediterranean countries, uh, a sort of mixture. But I was fascinated by the language, by the name, Mediterraneo, and I asked uh, about it uh, uh, the owners. They were, they are Slovenian, not uh, Italian. But uh, they used, uh, I asked them, uh, is uh, Mediterraneo the Slovenian word? They told me no, it is not. So it's interesting because they uh, used a foreign word, an Italian word, to define the space, the landscape of the Mediterranean uh, Sea, of the Mediterranean world. And uh, I think that this uh, is eloquent about uh, uh, the way uh, Slovenia is able to conceive a multiple identity. Uh, Mediterraneo is something which uh, is uh, here, but it, it's also something which is uh, the other, different uh, from here. And uh, it's uh, something that uh, uh, you can build uh, in the center of Ljubljana and uh, that brings you in some, to some other place. 
which is exactly what the literature said, told us about uh, uh, the multiple identity of uh, Northern and Mediterranean Europe. All these works that are able to connect uh, Northern and South Europe. And I think that Slovenia can have a, a crucial role in uh, um, uh, this uh, capacity of Europe to be a Mediterranean Europe which means to go beyond Europe. Because being a Mediterranean Europe means, uh, would, mean, uh, would mean to go beyond Europe, to go beyond Europe to the east and to the south. In order to do that, you have to do a lot uh, of work in the field of education. Because we, we must go beyond the national and European uh, borders when we teach in our school or in our universities. The European and national pattern structure of uh, our teaching. And then, of course, later we can speak also about uh, this uh, connection, difficult connection between uh, Europe uh, of the North and the uh, Mediterranean Europe, which is connected exactly also to the question of the myth. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ali said, Ali, co founder. Hello, uh, offering uh, dot life and the Euro Mediterranean photo marathon. Uh, the Mediterranean area basin is full of opportunities in different fields uh, like tourism, like economy, of course, like education, and like photography, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, I'm I'm very pleased to be here, and I'm I'm also very pleased that uh, um, in his introduction, His Excellency spoke of uh, hearts and minds of uh, romanticism and, and pra pragmatism. Um, I think our project started in 2013. Uh, really, it was a project uh, from the heart. Um, and it started uh, in the city of Beirut. That's where the story begins. Um, our idea was to um, engage youth uh, in the city. It's a city that historically has been very uh, open to uh, generations of displaced people and, and, and migrants. At the same time, it's a city um, still convulsing after a very long uh, civil war. It's a city that's informally cantonized, uh, where the urban geography represents the social, political, uh, economic divisions uh, of, of the society. And so what we wanted to do was engage youth in, uh, in their own city, to help them discover their own, their own city. And we were thinking of approaches to do this, and one approach was to use uh, the power of uh, new media. Uh, and so we, we had a, a meeting and uh, discussed different ideas and decided to uh, hold the first Beirut photo marathon. Uh, we didn't invent photo marathons, but uh, I think uh, we, we played a role in, in using it as a way to uh, influence uh, social change or have some impact. Uh, we had the first photo marathon. We did a call and uh, there was a huge response. Almost 100 people, uh, young people <coughs> mostly from the city came. Uh, after that, what we discovered were, was very unexpected. Uh, we discovered that not only did over 90% of the participants report to us that they visited areas uh, in the city that they've never been to, which was very important to us and motivating, but we looked at the archive and we saw uh, patterns all over the archive, a common perception of different topics, uh, from heritage to propaganda to taboos, and perhaps I can unpack those topics later uh, in the discussion, but. What we saw was something, a tool that we discovered is, could be very powerful. And determining how communities, groups of people perceive certain issues in their, in their city using the medium of, of photography. Um, after that, we started using this, this method uh, to raise awareness on specific issues, uh, on urban ge development in, in Beirut, uh, on gender issues facing uh, youth in, in the city, uh, etc. We began speaking about our experiences. Uh, we developed an online platform called Frame.life um, where we host these images. We published a magazine uh, by the same name. Um, and then something kind of extraordinary happened, which sort of speaks to this uh, search for identity across the Mediterranean. Um, extraordinary and unexpected to us. We started, uh, people started approaching us from different associations and organizations um, across the Mediterranean saying, we would like to do something similar. And they all had their own reasons. 
And all of those reasons, you can really draw a straight line back to this issue of identity, this issue of otherness, and this demand, this feeling of wanting to belong to something greater, something bigger. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think, I, I won't go on too long, I, I will leave it there, but what I, I hope we can do through this discussion is unpack kind of the motivations of what led to the growth, the organic growth of uh, the photo marathon model across the Mediterranean. We've uh, worked in partnership with organizations in eight cities now. Uh, the last event we had had seven cities that participated across the region. Uh, Ljubljana was, was one of them. Um, and of course the role of new media and the digital space in creating new uh, geographies, uh, new networks for people to collaborate, uh, which is a huge opportunity and uh, very important in, for our work. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Sigil Massi, what's the role? Let's talk, let us talk about the union for the Mediterranean. What's the role and the main mission? And I would like uh, uh, to um, give me some concrete examples of what are you doing and how is Slovenia integrated into the uh, union? I'll take this microphone. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to. Uh, <coughs> go back to a debate that uh, happened in uh, 2008 when the Union for the Mediterranean was launched. Some of you in the room may uh, remember it. When basically there was a debate be between first the USM identity needs to be um, composed of only the countries around the Mediterranean where all of the EU countries uh, to be included as EU within the UFM. Well, there was a debate, no need to go back to the uh, detail of this debate, <coughs> but at the end, the decision, well, a lot of things. We could uh, do a lot of name dropping there, but uh, basically the uh, conclusion and the decision was to have the whole of the EU within the uh, UFM. I think at a very personal level that it was the right decision. Because at the end of the day, European countries have chosen to have the EU. So it has to be a coherence. And uh, uh, the EU, as a global entity, is involved in Mediterranean policy. Now, there are debates within the EU. We leave it to the European Parliament to deal with that. <laughs> but yes, I think it is coherent to have the whole of the EU as a group, as an entity, as an organization involved in, in this. Having said that, that does not exclude, and it actually exists, that there are some informal groups that gather Mediterranean countries. For example, in the Western Mediterranean, there is a group informal, but that works very well, which is called the 5 plus 5, the five countries of uh, uh, Southern uh, uh, Europe. Western, and uh, countries from North Africa. And there are other groups. And by the way, within the EU, there are a lot of groups. There are the Visegrad group, there are, I mean, it's normal that for geographical reasons, some group of countries tend to meet and interact formally or informally in different frameworks. <coughs> this is just to make the point that it is normal, and actually it's good and positive for countries to have multi-dimensions. And a country like Slovenia, and I uh, completely agree with what you, you said uh, uh, about being both Mediterranean, European, Balkan, and many other things. Because uh, 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 when you're a member of the OECD, for example, a group of countries, well, you're a member of a group of countries that go far beyond any geographical <coughs> criteria, because the criteria is more on the uh, economic and social development side. The UFM has its coherence. It is the whole of the EU. For example, there will be a very interesting question about the future of the UK in the UFM. It will be dealt with in due time. It's not a priority, but it will be dealt with in due time. Now, this is as far as the geographical composition is concerned. But the interesting thing is that the UFM, uh, again, uh, under the leadership of its member states, has decided to invest more on an action-oriented vision 
of uh, 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 the strategy that we are implementing. We work on the basis of what we call the three P's. The P for politics, the P for platforms, and the P for projects. The P for politics is, of course, we are an intergovernmental institution. So we go by the priorities of the government. The P for platform is, once you have the priorities of the government, how do you involve a multi-stakeholder approach? Engaging a lot of interlocutors so that you create consensus, you create dynamics, and you create virtuous initiatives. And the P for projects is, at the end of the day, people need to see some concrete things, concrete projects, concrete results. I'm glad to say, and it's not because Professor Zahiri is here, but I would like to really congratulate him and his team for the excellent work that Emuni here in Slovenia, in beautiful Piran, the mayor of Piran, and he was here. I would like to, yeah, <laughs> congratulations to you, sir. Uh, really uh, uh, doing a fantastic job gathering young people from education, mobility, employability, a lot of issues that are in a day-to-day -day life building to intercultural dialogue that Annaline Foundation is so well invested in, building on a lot of things that are a day-to-day -day life, because at the end of the day, how do we build le vivre ensemble, living together, okay? And here I would like to say something. I'm going to say it, I may take a little bit more time because then I need to go, this is why I will overstep a little bit my time limit. Uh, I just want to say two major uh, uh, messages that I want to share with you. The first one is, let us not be trapped, and I say trapped, by the focus on the negative agenda. This is really something that we should fight against. Yes, the negative agenda, which is terrorism, radicalism, uh, illegal migration, these are serious challenges. We must face it with determination with fierce determination, and we have to continue working collectively against it. But there's not a full stop there. There's also the positive agenda. There are people, there are young people, there are women, and I can tell you, the civil societies in the southern Mediterranean countries, the youth and women, are the asset number one of that region. So we must invest on them more and more and more, because at the end of the day, the positive agenda will be the leading agenda. The second message I would like to share with you is within the negative agenda, let us never forget that facing radicalism and terrorism, we are on the same side. There is no north, there is no south, there is no east, there is no west. There is only humanity against inhumanity, against barbarians. We stand on the same side. We are fighting the same fight. And this is a very strong effort that makes us work together. Making us work together does not mean that we do mega miracles. This is why I come back to the initial uh, statement I made. Yes, it will take time. Yes, it will take time. This is why we must not uh, 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 oversell the dreams that we are, uh, are, are exposing. We must recognize that it will be hard work, but this hard work will only come from collective concerted common work and this is what unites us because what unites us is far stronger far bigger than what divides us and this is why we strongly <coughs> believe that within the UFM within the Anarin Foundation within MUNI whichever letters you put or the citizen program I know that you are working very well and and we, uh, I'm glad to, to support what you are doing and indeed congratulations to uh, this excellent initiative, because this is the positive agenda, this is scoring the goal, and this is the way forward. What we can do, we have to do it proactively and concretely, and this is how I'm sure that we can build the pace towards uh, uh, peace, security, and stability in our beautiful region. I mean, there, there, there are m more beauties than beasts. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what the place of Slovenia in I would like to pick up because I think this was a, a very beautiful talk, the, the fight humanity against inhumanity. I think this is exactly what should unite us. 
um, when it comes to political, economic cooperation, or when you mentioned youth and young people. And as you are coming from Beirut, I, I have to share with you one very good experience I had. It actually was an exercise we did in my office together with the university last year in Beirut. We went there and we established very good relations and contacts um, with the programs at the university. Um, very good programs, how to integrate young people, refugees, knowing that especially Lebanon, with I don't know, 4 million of inhabitants and almost 2 million of refugees, which is the biggest number in the world, is really tackling well with the integration, with all the efforts that uh, the small country face. And we brought this experience to Slovenia with a small office, with a book. We actually put together the stories of kids, children, and we talked to them. And children everywhere in the world have the same dreams. They're the same everywhere. And this is also what our ministry is pushing through in Slovenia, positive agenda for youth. This is something what you mentioned. We can focus a lot in our cooperation, and we have to. What we are seeing as a small country in Slovenia, and I'm more working in the Western Balkan, is brain drain. It's lack of vision for young people. It's difficult economic situation. It's despair. And people are leaving also our countries here in the region. So we have to work on connectivity, on initiatives for young people. This is only one of the challenges that we have, what Slovenia can contribute to the region. I mean, we are also on this crossroad of the Mediterranean route for refugees. Um, Balkan is currently very destabilized. It's, I would say, knowing what's happening in Bosnia and Herzegovina, or Kosovo, or Macedonia, that is slightly stabilized. But the situation then, one And when we have particular things, we should leave it to the national countries to deal with it. But we have to connect whether it's euro or it's economic cooperation, whether it's um, security and defense, which is now the next pillar of European cooperation, or research and development, which I think it's opening new jobs and opportunities for young people. This is how I would like to see European Union also in the future, and being a credible partner in the region and stable to work strongly with our neighboring countries. And um, I do hope for Slovenia, for example, if European Union would go on the path of destruction, would be extremely dangerous. We need to keep peace and stability, even sometimes it sounds um, a bit um, unimportant, but I think it's a permanent fight, maybe today even more than before, especially in times we see globalization, world is changing rapidly around us, uh, the balance of powers is shifting from Europe away. We are not that important partner today as we think we are, but we have really these common challenges that you said we are part of European Union, yes we are, but it doesn't exclude that we are Mediterranean and we work together. I think this is extremely important nowadays. Yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, in Spanish, um, the Mediterranean citizens ask something. What concretely are you doing? Give us some examples, please. Okay, we are organizing the Mediterranean circus, if I'm right. Okay, yeah. we are. Uh, we were born in uh, 2008. This is our first <coughs> debate: the role of citizens in democratic transitions. Uh, our foundation was born in Valencia. Uh, I like very much the things uh, uh, Mr. Cecil Massey said because it's very important 
not focus on the negative agenda. It was also our our uh, our goal, our, our message, especially now. Uh, you know, uh, in the past weeks we had uh, the the attack in Barcelona and uh, uh, this uh, put on the first line of the political agenda and in Europe the question of security. It's very important to underline we are on the same uh, side. side, on the same side because European and Arabs uh, we are the same warriors in the in the in the same battle this is very important be because in some areas of europe especially in the areas that are not living with the south they are avoiding this perspective in the media in the politicals and this is very very uh, uh, dangerous what are the goals of our foundation uh, I find a very interesting question you sent to us in the email. Uh, this process uh, should be a top-down or a bottom-up process? Uh, foundation of the Citizens of the Mediterranean is a foundation that uh, uh, work with institutions, then work with politicals. In fact, uh, our team is composed by uh, politicals, ex-politicals, professors in the university, researchers, uh, students, citizens we don't have a only definition of our member as i said before uh, we are members of 28 countries this is uh, the only condition we ask for is to be a citizen what does mean citizen citizen means to be an active on the construction uh, it doesn't matter what religion it doesn't matter what is your uh, uh, a political uh, perspective or, or your country then what are our goals for uh, to make a very simple portrait of our uh, intentions or, or perspectives uh, we would like to work for a, a concerted governance uh, this is the reason we have informal contacts with the politicians and uh, with the universities also, we would like to promote the, uh, the opening of countries that are very, very, very close in their national borders. We appreciate especially uh, um, uh, to have uh, uh, activities with the base uh, Arab countries. Arab mm -hmm. countries, the, we say on the south of the Mediterranean. Uh, we have members in in our in our uh, executive council uh, from the south of the Mediterranean. For us, it's very important. Half of the members of our board of directors are from the north of the Mediterranean, and the other for the south. And it's very important for our perspective to listen the different solutions uh, they uh, suggest uh, for make uh, another political uh, perspective. Also, we. Uh, have in mind to help, to collaborate, uh, uh, to create a lasting space of peace and development. For this is very important education. This is why the foundation uh, of the Assembly of Citizens of the Mediterranean uh, is uh, working for create links with, uh, not only with the morning, we also other uh, universities in the region. In fact, most of us, we are professors of the university. Me, I'm a director of the foundation, but I'm also professor in the Valencia University and journalist. Mm -hmm. I'm professor of journalism. It's very important to create uh, this space of peace and to be civilized in the media agenda. We are together, we are creating uh, forums together, we are making a common agenda because we have a common agenda. We have problems in the Mediterranean area that uh, doesn't exist in the north. This is very clear. And then we need uh, uh, to help to build because a foundation alone or a country alone or a political uh, alone are not able to do anything uh, our goal is to create a net of uh, citizens able to make uh, uh, intellectual pressure from the bottom to up because Russia. of course we need politicals top down but it's very important to promote the citizenship because there is not a democracy if we are not able to be to build a very uh, stable uh, net of citizens and i think this is something uh, we need to make an uh, step forward in the in the mediterranean this is our goal okay professor would you add something or yes. let's talk about a little bit about lang uh, of languages
Yes, uh, I think that uh, um, the main question uh, is uh, uh, related to the fact that uh, Europe uh, should uh, define, uh, should uh, be able to rethink uh, its own uh, identity. Because uh, if we go back, uh, we see that uh, Europe has uh, two different identities. The first one is uh, the old myth of Europe. Europe is uh, the only um, uh, uh, land, uh, it's the only part of the world that comes from another part of the world. Uh, Europe was uh, the daughter of uh, uh, the king of Tyrus. Uh, so he, uh, she was, uh, she came from Lebanon. She was uh, abducted by Zeus, by the king of gods, and she was in the form of a bull, and she was brought to Crete. So the first Europe had uh, its center in the Mediterranean, in a place uh, uh, that was a crossroads of different cultures, the north, the south, the east and the west. But uh, when did we start using the word uh, Europeans? Europeans was used for the first time in the 8th century, in connection to the fight between the empire of Charlemagne and the Muslim. So, Europeans was uh, at that point moved to the north, and it was connected to the perception of the Mediterranean as uh, a dangerous place, desecrated place, because it was used in a Christian uh, perspective in opposition to the uh, Arab perspective. And this uh, um, co uh, opposition between an inclusive Europe, polyphonic Europe, and a, a northern Europe on the other side that exclude the Mediterranean, I think is our problem now. We should uh, rethink the uh, uh, sense and meaning of Europe, not only as Mediterranean countries, but as Europe in uh, its uh, own uh, capacity as a whole. Also because I think that the question of migration showed a, a very simple thing, a very simple fact. C, a C, like the Mediterranean, is not made by water. A land is not made by earth. They are made by people. And people move. <coughs> people are arriving. So the Mediterranean is here, is not there. It is in the middle of Europe. It's not on the border of Europe. It's us, in a way. So we have to uh, uh, think uh, about the Mediterranean as a part of our own identity. And uh, again, I am really grateful, uh, and I think that uh, Slovenia if, uh, has uh, that uh, a kind of uh, Euro parliamentarian like uh, uh, the one I just heard uh, uh, will have a great future, because uh, uh, I think that uh, what you said was really uh, important uh, about uh, the role of Slovenia and about uh, the role of Europe and about uh, the role of culture and education for the future generation, this positive uh, agenda that uh, must create a new generation of Europeans. Mm, certainly, yeah. Uh, Mr. Ali said, Ali, did you, why Ljubljana? I think that uh, Ljubljana is a part of this project uh, that uh, connects seven uh, cities. Mm -hmm. That's a good question that I, I, I wish I can answer in a very straightforward way, uh, but, but I can't. Um, just sort of like the topic of this, of this discussion is Ljubljana, a Mediterranean country. I think there's many answers, uh, but I think it's, it's a good point to go back to sort of uh, the issue of identity and the growth of our initiative, small initiative started in Beirut uh, across the region. Um, and the feedback effect, the feedback effect of how this growth and these partnerships started to influence our work in return. We weren't just determining the path uh, forward and the next steps, but we began uh, learning from other org organizations across uh, this region. Um, so going back to the issue of identity, what ended up happening was we started to be become approached by different individuals and associations telling us they would like to, to do similar events in their cities, um, all for uh, similar reasons. Uh, that come back to this uh, search for identity 
And I'll give really straightforward examples. Uh, one of our first partners was um, from Napoli, Naples, and uh, he approached us and said, you know, as somebody from Naples, I feel like our city and, and our area of the country is, is much more similar to, to Beirut than it is to the north of my own country. And I can't say if that's a common feeling. I'm just saying this is what we were told by one, one person from Naples. And so he said, we want to do this with you and show the similarities between Beirut and Naples. And indeed, in the images that we collected over one day, over a 12-hour event from the two cities, it's very difficult to tell the difference between the cities just through imagery. And that alone, I think, is a powerful symbol. Um, our partner in Marseille told us something very similar. Uh, we, we are, before we are French, we're Marseillaise. They, this, they said that to me, and it's like ingrained in my, in my mind. And uh, we are, there's no question of Mediterranean identity. They're very Mediterranean and proud um, of it. And we want to join this initiative that's happening across uh, the, the Mediterranean. Uh, Palermo had, uh, the organizers in Palermo had a very similar sort of uh, feeling in Sicily. Um, Algiers joined us. They, they watched the video that we made about the initiative, the organizer there, who then partnered with a very great organization called Scilabs in Algiers. Uh, they said, you know, we are part of this community too, but nobody hears about us and nobody, uh, you know, pays attention to us and, and we're not in the media as much as other, other cities. And we want to join and show that we are also part of this, this community. And so organically, we started to, to grow and we were just listening very carefully for opportunities. People were approaching us, and we were welcoming of them and sort of against some odds, we, we ended up collaborating and coordinating this large regional uh, event. Um, and so, and now coming to Ljubljana, which was one of the last cities to, uh, to join, you know, uh, the organizer here, our partner, a peace institute, uh, approached us and, and, and said, like, we really like your work and we'd like to join uh, this community, this network across the Mediterranean. And again, I, I can't answer it directly, but I can say that um, all of this feeling of sort of uh, otherness and feeling of like being part of a regional network, uh, and here I am at, at, a, con at, a, at a conference and, and a panel discussion with this question of whether Ljubljana is a Mediterranean country. Well, Archives can, uh, you know, are, uh, capture history. They're powerful tools to build empathy, to understand, you know, each other better. Um, and so all of these ideas uh, I'm learning from, and we're learning as frame from, from our partners. And yeah, this is, this is the common thread that, that binds us. Um, I think I'll, I'll end there. Maybe uh, Tanya Fayon, Mrs. Tanya Fayon, um, just to clarify something. As a state, uh, we are not a part of so-called uh, uh, group of Mediterranean. So. Um, do we even show a certain uh, distance towards uh, the east and uh, eastern formations uh, like uh, Visegrad 4? What we do? So we should uh, change our, uh, our approach huh? um, as a state. I was uh, waiting for this question and I think I can afford a bit of criticism now since I'm not from foreign ministry and I see that a lot of them actually left for great strategic form, I guess. Um, in any case, criticism in a way, what you mentioned, we are not attending uh, the meetings. I think um, the foreign ministry is too much reluctant to the Mediterranean cooperation, to be frank. It is a strategic goal of our country, but when you 
talk you mostly hear about international, European, bilateral cooperation, but very rarely about Mediterranean cooperation. And when I address this question to the, to the ministry, normally um, it's, it's a conflict if you look like that. It's a strategic goal, but we don't discuss about it. And I don't get an answer. So I think this is something we will have to internally um, really position ourselves. And this is what I tried to say at the beginning. What is a strategic goal also when we look the approach of Slovenia outwards? Because years ago, I remember, we tried not to deal with the Balkans because we wanted to be more close to Germany or Austria. Now we see, okay, we have to be there. But we are often not knowing where do we belong or what could be the interest for our country. I see a big gap here or lack of strategic interest or foreign diplomacy because we have a role to play. If I look just Mediterranean region, um, Slovenia has much to offer. Um, it is the closest EU member state, as I said before, to the Mediterranean, besides arts. We have an emuni, and this is actually what we have, higher education, where we tried to play a role, but this is not everything. I think potential is there, but we have to decide where do we see us as an intermediator. I certainly see us playing a role in the region, and this is our region. It's not only European Union, it's Balkans, it's Mediterranean, but we have to see. We are a small state, we cannot make miracles, but we have to decide actually strategically what we want. And um, I said challenges are the same. Better we cooperate with many of us here, um, better we will, I think, make also living in our country. Certainly. Uh, as the Union for Mediterranean is based uh, in Barcelona, uh, we can say that there's not, not, not only the southern side of the Mediterranean that is, that is vivid and turbulent, but also the northern uh, part. We can't forget uh, the Catalan uh, independence movement. Huh? What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very delicate yeah, issue know, right now on October the political, on the political uh, 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 arena. In our circle in Valencia, for example, we have uh, people who are pro, yeah. and uh, some of us we are <laughs> we are not uh, pro because we we prefer. Uh, this is one of the strength points. We are able to have discussions because uh, one of the uh, things you must do when you are a member of our circle is to respect the political uh, positions. The only thing we ask for is to respect uh, our code, and our code is linked to the uh, human human rights and the uh, international institutions. This is the uh, all the borders or limits you make. But this is very interesting because Valencia, the city where the foundation was born, uh, is also a, a, a region uh, who speaks uh, two languages. We speak uh, uh, Spanish and we speak Catalan. For example, me at home, we speak uh, Catalan with Papa and uh, Espanol with Mama. Then I have this conflict at home. <laughs> I, but it's not conflict. It's very important the language. It's not conflict. Well, it's uh, Valenciano. Valenciano. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's a political question because some of us we say it's not Catalan. It's Valenciano. Okay, yeah. it's a nationalism inside another nationalism. Yeah. This is why in my region uh, we used to live with this kind of discussion or this uh, kind of conflict. The facts are: uh, the next month we have a very uh, delicate moment in Spain. And uh, we must deal with, and the only way uh, to have to deal with is to listen, uh, to try to be uh, on the side of the the right, on the side of the law, and also try to um, to take care of our public uh, public discourse, because in order to be together, continue speaking, because. Next month we have uh, uh, this election. I'm sure we are going to to have this referendum, but it's very important not to close the debate, not to uh, stay in a uh, non-negotiation non-negotiation position because it's a situation of uh, sensibilities. You can find Catalans who, with the heart, want independence, 
but with the mind uh, are on the other position. We have the Catalans who uh, want the independence uh, in all the aspects. You have the Catalans who don't know even to speak uh, or to listen anything about the, the... In general, for the Spanish political, this is a very key issue. Uh, and uh, for us, uh, we, don't, we are not going to have an official position in that aspect. Why? Because we expect all the political... Uh, in fact, um, our members are from all the five uh, parties in, in, in Spain. In my region, specifically, uh, now we have a government uh, uh, created by uh, agreement and uh, all the people say uh, the foundation is the place where it's possible to deal. It's possible to sit around the same table, people from the right, people from the left, and, and to make even political agreements in, in, in our areas. But uh, we are going to, to respect uh, all our members. We don't participate directly uh, in, inside the political negotiation, but, also, but uh, we open our table to the discussion, intellectual discussion, always. Okay. I will um, interrupt our debate here and open it to the public, to the audience. Uh, we are in a little bit in a hurry, I guess, but uh, anyway, don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. We didn't even, we haven't uh, touched on uh, the dispute between Slovenia and Croatia uh, uh, concerning arbitration ruling. Uh, we didn't talk about uh, migration. Uh, I don't know uh, how do media cover mi migrant crisis, for example. There are many topics that are uh, very relevant and interesting. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just jump in on this question of uh, how media cover uh, the crisis happening around the Mediterranean uh, right now. And, and just from kind of a broad perspective, uh, w what we see, I think, is a great battle happening in the digital space. Uh, and it's a great battle against people who are waging uh, like fear and division uh, versus people who are using the space as a way to unite communities, as a way to understand each other, to build empathy, to spread knowledge and education. Um, and in this battle, I think we're all content creators, uh, every one of us who uses uh, social media uh, and new media tools. And I think this is shifting from like the heart to the more pragmatic um, sort of foundation of what we're trying to do uh, is push back against these people who are trying to sow division. And we see it happening very, very well. We see it happening, like they're very successful at doing it. You saw it influence the elections in the United States, kind of tearing the country apart politically. You see it with Brexit and with the migration crisis and with sort of the rise of um, semi-fascist groups across the region and, and, and other issues. And so I think our approach is, is gentle, it's subtle, but it's creating a platform for people to interact, to importantly see through each other's eyes how we perceive different issues and identify, like, yes, there are differences, but there's also many, many similarities that, that unite us using the power of photography, which transcends the language barriers. And so this is, this is where we're at now, and we're a drop in the sea, excuse the pun, but, but we're a drop in the sea, and I think with enough drops, like, we can shift the tide. Um, and so I mean, maybe somebody could jump in and, and, and discuss their experiences like on, on digital media, content creation, uh, that kind of thing. Of course, we welcome questions and engagement. Maybe languages. Um, I think that uh, a year or two years ago, the uh, Analint uh, Foundation launched uh, a, a manifesto for translation, mm -hmm. yes. uh, that we should translate uh, mm -hmm. literature from uh, yes, uh, it's a connected also. 
to Beto Eco di quasi la yeah, stessa yeah. cosa, di is un nice book. I think that uh, about languages I, I agree very much uh, with uh, uh, this role uh, of media because uh, and of uh, photography in particular which is uh, really able to go beyond uh, the verbal language. We should start thinking about languages in a way that goes, that goes beyond the verbal languages. There are so many other languages that we can teach and learn. The, um, of course, the language of food, but also the language of, of social convention, of the role, for instance, of women and uh, Uh, males uh, of a religion. So, um, uh, if we want to create uh, a dialogue, uh, a community, we must uh, involve, uh, we must uh, uh, work with all these kind of languages. Uh, sometimes uh, in uh, the web we see that uh, people uh, identify themselves uh, as, for instance, Italian, even if uh, they don't speak uh, the Italian language, just because uh, they live in an Italian way, of course uh, they are of uh, an Italian descent, but uh, they have the way of acting, of uh, thinking, uh, of uh, the social roles uh, that are common in Italy. So uh, you can be Mediterranean not only because you speak uh, a verbal language, but because you know the, all the languages, the other languages that are spoken are, uh, in the other countries. And this, I think, is crucial, because when you meet a person uh, from another ethnicity or another culture, sometimes uh, the conflict is raised not by the difference of opinion, by, but by the difference of behavior, just because you don't know the language of the culture. Any question? Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I really like to say, because you are speaking about languages, it's so important. Thanks to the English, we are able to have this debate. But uh, I uh, I dream the moment uh, when all of us we are able, for example, to communicate in Arab. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the eternal student of Arab. And they say, oh my God, uh, when I try to, to communicate in Arab, I'm able to, to speak with... Uh, Millions of people, yeah. not with a little uh, mm. village. Millions of people, thanks to the English, but we need to make an extra effort to promote uh, the diversity yeah. of languages we have in our area. And in that aspect, our foundation, uh, that's a, uh, still a, a little foundation, but uh, it's a broad foundation in uh, human beings from 28 uh, Uh, nationalities and more than 28 languages. We uh, make debates, but also we made uh, publications uh, in collaboration with uh, cultural institutions. For example, we have, we have published a translation of Kavafis, this is a Greek mm -hmm. uh, poet. Yeah, we make an edition in Greek uh, and uh, Spanish and French, uh, because in, in, our, in our foundation we translate uh, in um, English, French, uh, uh, Arab and uh, Spanish and also Catalan, uh, some uh, some publications. Also, we the last month we uh, made the publication of Yves Hifaya. It's an Arab poet uh, who was born in in Al Andalus in Spain, and it, it was published in uh, in the four languages also. This is very important because people who try to read in Spanish is, uh, try to read also in mm -hmm. French try to read in, in Arabic, uh, they try to be interested but other ways <laughs> to express. And uh, we have a lot of work of doing in front of us. We have uh, still in mind a very little translation project, Babel translation project, because we, want, we, we would like to make a, a circle of, of volunteers for helping to put to movement all, all this very nice material. Inshallah, we are going to make also in Italian. Oh, Italian, very close Thank language to, to the Catalan. <laughs> and uh, for us, it's a very nice experience to, to be together and to be, for example, so many people uh, didn't know uh, Kabafis and the uh, Mediterraneans. Mm -hmm. And so many people, even Spanish, don't know Infufaya, that is a very, very, very uh, superior poet in, in our uh, Al-Andalus culture, for example, then for me the languages are very important tool for fighting uh, uh, against this uh, colonialist, uh -huh. very nice colonialist because uh, 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 
they allow us, uh, it allows to express and to share uh, with other people. But we need to to uh, to valorize uh, mm -hmm. our languages for for Slovenia. I think it's very important in Spain. Uh, so so little people speak uh, your language, and it's very important to to have uh, a path for for being in touch with people in their own language. It, it doesn't matter if it's uh, a little country, a big country, because uh, a language is uh, an history, it's uh, a genetical uh, transmission of, uh, of the people. Yeah, I think that we should uh, stop here, and I hope that we have at least uh, answered the question, is Slovenia a Mediterranean uh, country? Of course it is. So uh, thanks a lot Thank and uh, have a nice day. Thank you very much.